Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Michelle with Alaska Rural Homestead and today I'm going to be sharing with you how we grow great winter squash and pumpkins on our homestead because I know that you, that you guys have seen our previous video, Biggest Harvest on the Homestead and that was definitely a wonderful harvest. Uh, but this year I've got some different seeds I'm going to be starting and this is some of my seeds but I usually save a lot of my seeds from uh, the different vegetables that I grow on the homestead so I will be growing some more of those but just incorporating some newer stuff I do have to apologize for the noise in the background because we do have our freeze dryer going and it's a little noisy so I'm sorry about that um, and you know when it's really cold outside we can't really go out and film too much because most of our work comes inside so uh, but I will show you guys some clips of uh, my high tunnel when I was prepping the soil from last year so I do want to mention that and if you guys have not subscribed to our channel, don't forget to subscribe and like our channel and share our video. Uh, so today I'm going to be sharing with you how to start growing pumpkins from seedlings to big grown pumpkins. One thing you want to make sure, if you live in a cold climate, you want to make sure you start your seeds indoors roughly about eight weeks. Now, we live in a cold climate, so we have to start our seeds indoors, but if you live in a warmer climate, you can definitely uh, plant your seeds directly in the ground, but we start our seeds about eight weeks ahead of time and we will plant them into the high tunnel roughly around Memorial Day. So to start your seeds off, you are going to want fairly some fairly big pots and you are going to want sterile commercial potting mix. Now I start my seeds, I start all my seeds in these little jiffy pellets and for one because pretty much we have to deal with what we have in Alaska here so there are different sizes of these little pellets but I start these in I start all my seeds in these little pellets and then I transfer the whole little pellet along with the seedling that has emerged after five to seven days of germination and then I will put it into the nice clean sterile pots that I have and when you are choosing the type of pot for your squashes and pumpkins you want to really make sure that they have enough room to grow their nice strong roots because if not you don't want your squashes and pumpkins to become root bound and they will become leggy and they'll start stretching and so real important just to give them enough room for nice healthy roots 
So when you start your seeds in bigger pots, it gives enough room for your squashes and pumpkins so they don't get root bound because squashes and pumpkins are really delicate and they do not handle being transferred into bigger pots very well. So as soon as it warms up outside, I bring all my plants into the high tunnel so they can adjust to the temperature. And that's the thing, when you are trying to harden off your plants, you do not want it so hot because your plants will struggle and more than likely they will start dying off. So make sure you keep that temperature around 70 degrees when you are trying to harden off your plants. So make sure that you're able to keep your little seedlings at a temperature between 70 and 90 degrees. Now, wherever you decide to put them, make sure that you're able to control that temperature. And they're gonna need roughly about 16 hours of light. And is what we use is usually a shop light. And let's say this is our pot and we will keep that light directly over that pot until the seedlings emerge. And then as they grow, you will want to adjust your light because if not, that plant, if you put your light up further up, that little seedling is going to struggle and it's going to try to stretch its roots and you're going to get leggy uh, squashes and pumpkins. And then eventually they'll just die off. So as your seedlings are emergent, you just want to keep them moist. You do not want to overwater them. Just think, little plant, little water. Big plant, bigger water. So, and one other thing, do not, I do not water my plants directly over top. I always, always water them from the bottom. And in the next coming videos, we are gonna get together our uh, planting area for for our seedlings and we'll definitely share that video with you on how we actually start our seedlings um, so be sure to look for that and one thing I want to mention why it's fresh in my head if you guys have not seen some of our, some of our previous videos we have baby goats on the homestead we are looking for help from you viewers to name our baby goats. Now, I had made these little mug mats and I am giving away some of these beautiful mug mats for the best names from our viewers that we choose. So don't forget to put your names in the comments below so uh, you can have a chance of winning those beautiful mug mats for your homestead. All right, so that should pretty much cover it for today. One other thing I do want to mention, when you are gardening in your high tunnel or whatnot, always keep a journal on the weather. Keep a journal on how your plants are progressing. That way you can go back and if you are new to gardening or new to homesteading and you're just trying to figure it out, uh, a journal always helps to help you figure out that stuff where you went wrong and by watching other homestead videos you really learn a lot because homesteaders if they've been homesteading for a while now you will definitely pick up a lot of information on how to grow great vegetables and all kinds of information so anyways you guys stay tuned for more videos and i really hope you guys enjoyed this bye now